I see rising a super world church. I see the formation of a super world church council consisting of a union between liberal ecumenical Protestants and the Roman Catholic Church joining politically hand in hand to create one of the most powerful religious forces on earth. And this union is going to start as a cooperative charities program and it will end in a political union. This visible super world church is going to be spiritual in name only, freely using the name of Jesus Christ, but will in fact be anti-Christ and political in many of its activities. This powerful church union will be deeply involved in social action, tremendous charity programs and ministries of compassion. Its leaders will make statements about meeting human need. They'll send out a call for social action, political intervention, and a greater voice in world affairs. There's going to be, fourthly, a sudden mysterious chain of events. Just when it appears the ecumenical movement is nearly dead, a rather mysterious chain of events will bring about the framework for this union. Rome is going to insist upon and receive concessions from the Protestant ecumenical leaders. The Pope will be considered more of a political rather than a spiritual leader of this church union. Protestant leaders of the ecumenical movement are going to insist upon and receive concessions from Rome. Protestants will not be asked to consider the Holy Father as the infallible head of the church. They accept his political leadership without accepting his role as Peter's successor. Now, I'm not suggesting that the Pope or any of these church leaders involved in the super church will be engaging in antichrist activity. The Bible talks about something about that line, but I can't get into it now. The Bible, as far as I'm concerned, though, I see something that frightens me, the very core of my soul. I see an army of career people invading the most influential post in the super church. They're going to be ungodly antichrist people obsessed with the idea that this super church must become a big political power, strong enough to defeat anybody who opposes its actions. And while those that are in leadership are speaking about miracles and love and reconciliation, these hirelings who work under them are going to be harassing and persecuting every religious organization that does not come under their leadership. Next, occult practices within this church. I believe this super world church will condone certain occult practices. They'll set up study committees to defang the devil and remake his image into one of a non-entity, bland, someone not to be feared. Now, in some of the most respected, wealthy churches in America, seances will replace prayer meetings, and that's already happening. More and more ministers are going to be intrigued by the supernatural claims of the spiritualist and Satanist groups. And I see the day coming when certain ministers who've never been too close to Jesus will get very close to the devil. Satan is going to appear as an angel of light to deceive if it were possibly the elect, the chosen of God. Satan's own ministers will appear as these angels and they'll try to spread the message within the church that the enemy, Satan, is not to be feared. The super church will never officially accept yoke pop practices outright, but phonology, palmistry, Fortune telling and horoscopes will be widely respected and accepted. Now, listen closely. Next, I see the rise of another super church, a supernatural, invisible church, a union of deeply spiritual followers of Jesus Christ, bound together through the Holy Spirit, mutual confidence in Christ and His Word. The supernatural church of two believers will become a kind of underground church and will include Catholics and Protestants of all denominations, young and old, black and white, and people of all nations. And while this visible super world church gains political power, this invisible body of believers will grow tremendously in spiritual power. This power will come from persecution. The persecution madness that's coming upon this earth will drive these Christians closer together and closer to Jesus Christ. There would be less concern about denominational ties and more concern and emphasis on the coming of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will bring together in one all people of all faiths and walks of life. And although this supernatural church already exists around the world, in the days coming soon, it will become politically almost invisible. It will not speak out much on social issues, but as persecution becomes more intense, 
This body of true believers will become almost radical in its evangelistic efforts, and in this invisible church will receive supernatural unction and Holy Ghost power to preach the gospel to the four corners of the earth. Next, persecution for charismatic Catholics. Charismatic Catholics who consider themselves members of the invisible supernatural church of Jesus Christ face the most grievous hour of persecution of all. The Roman Catholic Church, I predict in the spirit, is about to pull in the welcome mat to all Catholics who speak with tongues and who lean toward the Pentecostal teachings concerning the Holy Spirit. High level political pressure will be placed on priests and local level to put the fire out. Watch for the Pope to take a negative stand against the charismatic movement within the Catholic Church. The honeymoon is about over. Catholic magazines will soon begin to speak out against the movement within its ranks and call for a purging. It will begin as a very slow trend, but will gather quick momentum until all Catholics in this movement will eventually face real persecution from within their own church. The charismatic movement within the Catholic Church will become so powerful and widespread, it will appear to some leaders as a threat to those who don't understand what it means. I see more than 500,000 involved in the Catholic Charis movement, charismatic movement within a short time. And those not in the movement will accuse it of lacking social concern and being too oblivious to the traditions of the church. They'll be accused of turning away from the Virgin Mary and negating the authority of the Pope. And that every charismatic Catholic who boasts about a baptism of the Holy Ghost prepare for persecution. It's not going to happen overnight, but most assuredly the day is coming when every single Catholic who's experienced a spiritual awakening will have to understand where his loyalties are. Some will be forced to return to tradition and allow the experience to be frozen. Many others, however, will soon discover that they have more Christian love, fellowship, and spiritual rapport with other spirit-filled Protestants and Catholics who have now centered their lives around the person of Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Holy Ghost, and his soon return. Many will not believe me, but I see the day when Catholics, Lutherans, and many others of all denominations are going to have to come out from among them. These new Christians will not call themselves Protestant or Catholic, but simply renewed Christians. Their fellowship will not be based Their fellowship will not be based on the experience of speaking with tongues, but will be centered on the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. That is our fellowship. <laughs>